I got bangs. You guys like my bangs? Thank you. So I tried filming this video like two weeks ago and I was in like the worst mood that day. I was planning on making this video really long and I was super excited to make it because it was a topic that I had been interested in talking about since before I even knew that I like wanted to do YouTube. But the day that I filmed it, my camera died like halfway through and it put me in a really bad mood. I was kind of rushed to make it. It just did not turn out the way that I wanted it to. So today is my redemption video. It's been two weeks since I sat down and filmed the video and it was honestly kind of a nice little break. Like I've only uploaded like three videos but I like YouTube is hard. <laughs> so today I'm going to be talking about a beloved topic amongst children. Literal children. Look, I know we just met, but you know, before we jump into today's topic, if you want to subscribe and see more of my face, click the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified every Sunday when I post a new video, which I know I didn't post like for like two weeks, but like take my word for it every Sunday with the little asterisk not every Sunday. Okay, before we need, okay, <laughs> before we can even jump into what I want to talk about, we have some brief history to cover. Littlest Pet Shop, or LPS for short, was created by Hasbro back in 1992. But we, we're not gonna focus on the 1992 version today, we're talking about the rebrand. Hasbro rebranded back in 2005 to create the LPS that we all know and love. I'm sure literally, at least you had one when you were a kid growing up, or like you knew someone that had a bunch, right? I, me. <laughs> so I got my first LPS for Christmas, 2006. I was six years old when I got my first one. And the collection just started like rapidly growing. Like LPS, they were my toys. Like some girls had Barbie, some girls had Polly Pocket. No, I had Littlest Pet Shop and that was my toy. As of right now, because I had been collecting for so long, I think I have like roughly 500. I don't even know the last time that I counted, but that's just like my rough guess. <laughs> so needless to say, I have been familiar with the LPS community for several, several several years. <laughs> Littlest Pet Shop continued to be so successful over the years that Hasbro started producing clothing, games for the Wii and the PC and Nintendo DS. They started making plushies and those little handheld digital games. And of course with LPS getting so popular it was inevitable for Littlest Pet Shop to not sneak their way into the internet. This is what we like to call LPS tube. I am no stranger to the LPS online community. In my last video I said that some of the first videos that I ever watched on YouTube were like toy videos and they were LPS videos. So this probably seems very confusing if you have no idea what I'm talking about. So let me walk you through the steps. How do you make an LPS video? Have an idea. Do you want to make a skit? A music video? You can obviously watch other people's videos and get inspiration, but try to be original. You know, come up with a little skit all by yourself. Like, take inspiration, but like, use, use your brain, you know? Pick what type of story you want to write about. It could be a love story, a soap opera drama, a Christmas special. I was no stranger to the Christmas specials. I had my own several Christmas specials growing up. Oh, I'm so excited to go Christmas shopping. Oh, look, a shopping cart. How convenient. Now this part is completely optional, but you could write a script if you want. Back when I was a kid, Back in my day. Back when I was a kid, writing a script was something that I feel like nobody did, but people still make videos to this day with their LPS. And more often than not, they do write scripts. Because if you're trying to create like a TV series or even just like a short film, I guess, writing a script is super beneficial because obviously it makes sense. You're gonna wanna go in knowing what you wanna film. Your next step is to choose a background, choose where you wanna film, make sure you have good lighting and good props, you know, little accessories, dress your little pets up and their little bows and skirts and pick the pets that you want to start in your video. Now, we don't just want some little, little Joe Schmo monkey. Uh. No, no, we want, we want the main five. We want the Cocker Spaniels, the Dachshunds, the Collies. And that's about it. Easy as that. You got your pets? You got your script? You got your background? Go, go film. Go, go have fun. Go have fun. There were several LPS videos slowly rising to the top over the next couple years, but I think everybody, and I mean everybody and their mom, can agree that there was one specific series that 
changed LPS to forever. LPS popular. This was a series created by Sophie Garrett. She then later rebranded to Sophie GTV. I actually didn't know this until I wanted to film this video, but when I went back to watch from the beginning of LPS Popular, she privated the first three videos. I was able to get them so I can show you some clips for this video, but they are re-uploaded, so they might have like a little watermark in the corner. The quality of those first three videos, by the way, the nostalgia it brings me. Oh my gosh. Like <laughs> watching that as a kid, you're like, oh Gosh. Oh my gosh. This is so good. LPS Popular is easily the most successful video in all of LPS history. The first video was posted July 15th, 2010. She's actually made it a point to continue this series all the way up until January 18th, 2019, which was the last video that she posted. However, the series isn't actually over. It was actually a two-part season finale and she only uploaded the first part, so like, we we could still be getting part two, that's all I'm saying. Sophie managed to film one complete season with 17 episodes in season one, all ranging anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes each. She then debuted season two in December 2012, which abruptly ended in 2019, like I just said, but hey, we could still get that last video. So since the very first video ever is actually privated, I could not tell you how many views it has, but episode four is the first public video on her channel in the LPS Popular series with 5.6 million views. In case you didn't think that I'm like hyping this up to be as big as it is, like no, it's big. Especially considering that this was back in like 2010 when how many kids were on YouTube watching toy videos? Not to mention that every single video in season one averages over 2 million views. Every single video. Plus all of the videos on her channel in total come to a whopping 105 million views. Sophie literally said, I'm gonna make a series about being popular and then in turn become popular. Branding. So today I just wanted to watch through the entirety of season one from my adult perspective. <laughs> you know, obviously this show has been out. Show? <laughs> you know, obviously this little LPS series has been out since I was a kid and it's been sitting for what, like 11 years now? This series was something that I used to be obsessed with as a kid. I literally used to come home from school and be like, where's the next episode? I need to catch up. LPS Popular was something that I definitely grew up with and it kind of like, kind of hits home for me. I do want to say though that this is nothing that I'm like embarrassed by at all. I think that everyone has a part of their past that can kind of seem like embarrassing, like as far as interests go, I guess. But I was so heavily involved in the LPS community, like it, I've met so many people through these little toys like it's crazy to think that something that like you wouldn't think is so impactful definitely is. Yeah I totally I grew up with LPS and they like changed my life dude. I don't want it to seem like cheesy or like that I'm embarrassed to talk about it because it is a super intriguing topic to talk about like as an adult with something that like you grew up with as a kid you know but I'm definitely not embarrassed by it and I think it's fun like especially if I upload this video and like people from the LPS community like come and see then it's like oh my gosh it's like a big family reunion Aww. I'll touch more on it like after we finish watching but like Let's get into it. I do just want to include a quick trigger warning before we start watching. Although this series is clearly targeted towards kids, it does touch very heavily on the topic of eating disorders. Sophie even does put this in some of the later episodes, like in the description. Yes, it is something that is targeted towards children. However, the storyline is more mature, I guess. As far as the eating disorder goes, it's something that both of the main characters struggle with throughout basically the entire series. It is something that I never realized as a kid while watching, but as an adult, I noticed it even before like having to read the description. So just a quick warning in case anybody needs it. So now that you have been educated on all things high and mighty, that is Littlest Pet Shop. Let's get into the first video. Wow, we are moving to California. Episode one starts off with your super stereotypical chick flick setting. Nerdy girl moves to the big city. Ricky, do you have to go to Orange County? I'm so sorry, Savvy. Oh, 
I wish I could stay. We learn that the main character, Savannah Reed, is going to be attending the same high school as her ex-best friend, Brooklyn Hayes. So Brooklyn moved to California like however long ago and they used to be like best best friends when they were living together, but since she's moved, they've kind of fallen out of contact. However, this does not take the idea out of Savannah's head that they aren't friends anymore. Savannah still very much so believes that they are best friends for life. Me and Brookie are BFFLs, best friends for life. So the intro is super quick and then there's this fun little montage of them moving to California. So to avoid copyright, here is my version of California Girls by Katy Perry. California Girls were unforgettable, Daisy Dukes bikinis on top, sun kissed skin so hot will melt your popsicles. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be waiting for my Golden Globe. Is that even Golden Globes or is it Oscars? <laughs> Savannah then quickly meets our next two main characters, Angelina and Genevieve. These are her two best friends throughout the remainder of the series. The first episode is moving so quick, but like I kind of have to point out like every little detail for it to make sense. So like let let's just to follow along okay savannah then spots the cute boy across the hall but to no surprise he is taken by the most popular girl in school who is he that's sage bond he's captain of the football team and jock and haughty extraordinaire but don't waste your time he's taken and then we meet her the most popular girl in school incoming barbie doll incoming barbie doll and her little plastic barbie dolls here comes none other than the queen Barbie doll herself. And that's the first episode. It's very cliche. It's very your basic like rom-com chick flick. Nerdy girl Savannah moves to the big city. She goes to meet her ex-best friend who's all like popular and like hot now. And then she automatically becomes best friends with two girls because like that's just how it works. You move to the big city, you make best friends. That's basically it. That's the first episode. That's all you need to know. Episode two. So now we get a look into Brooklyn Hayes and obviously she's not the same Brooklyn that she used to be. Who is she? That's Brooke Hayes. Richest and most popular girl in the school. She's different. She's hotter and she's making out with her boyfriend in front of the whole school. Avert your eyes everyone or risk being forever scarred. Brooklyn. It's a kid series. So we start to learn a little bit more about Brooke's evil personality. And also, we just completely glance over this part, but she stole Angelina's Gucci handbag. Yeah, and she also stole my Gucci handbag too the day after I got it. What? No! Brooklyn would never do anything like that. Why did we glance over that part? I need to know the details of this. So Savannah's going to her first class at her new school when she finally meets Rachel, one of Brooke's Barbie dolls. And Sage Bond, who is Brooke's boyfriend, who is the cute boy that we saw earlier. You're Rachel, right? Um, you're a loser, right? Dog, shoddy, okay. <laughs> Episode three. Savannah approaches Brooke again, and you know, she seems fine until she pulls her aside. You totally remember me, right? Oh, Savvy, of course I do. And look at you, you're so beautiful. Give me a hug. Get off me. What? Yeah, no, it, it's not pretty. I am not your BFFL or whatever anymore, okay? I don't need losers like you coming and ruining my perfect reputation. So of course, after that fiasco, Savannah runs home and she destroys her entire bedroom. <laughs> Take that. Oh. Which is kind of weird to think about that she has like a shrine of her best friend in her bedroom. Well, I'm sorry for thinking we were still friends. Also, <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I showed up to school looking like this, ah! you better stop! Angelina and Genevieve would also stop being my friends. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Reed, pay attention, please. Oh, sorry. How are they getting away with talking in this big group in the middle of class and then Savannah is the only one that gets called out? Huh? huh? Actually, this used to happen to me in high school a lot. My geometry teacher, I don't know if he just hated me, but he would always single me out. Like, true story, I we would be in class and the boys would be like throwing paper airplanes and my friend and I would be like passing a note or something and the boys were in the back like talking and like yelling and throwing stuff and we'd be we'd just be like quietly like passing our notes to each other and he'd be like, Kaylin, what are you, what did I just say? What's on the board? And I'm like, 
What? You're gonna, you're gonna call me out? And the boys are throwing paper airplanes and spitballs? And you're gonna call me out for silently sliding a note to the next desk over? I think he hated me. You know, Savvy, we should take you shopping. Shopping? Well, I could use a better wardrobe. <laughs> you think? Finally, this is the turning point where Savannah gets talk about getting a makeover. Hmm. We could always take you to the salon while we're at it. You know, get it dyed a different color. She's not like ugly, like she's cute, but like she could be hotter, you know? So thankfully her mom approves of her dyeing her fur a little bit. How about a nice red? Red? Yes. Red would be beautiful and it would be a lot less harsh than bleached blonde. And Savannah ends up calling Lena and Delina so they can go shopping over the weekend. In the meantime, Savannah starts noticing her body. This makes me look huge. Ugh, my stomach. So this is the first part in the series where we start to see Savannah turning down food because of the way that she looks. Okay, well, dinner is ready. Um, no thanks. I'm not really hungry right now. But never, ne never mind, never mind that. Here's a fun shopping montage. <laughs> So the girls go shopping and spend buttloads of money. Savannah then shows up to the salon and we get a little, we got, we got a little sneak peek at her new look. But you know, obviously we don't see it in this episode. We have to wait till the next episode for her big grand debut at school tomorrow morning. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Chihuahua. And she did it! Savannah is becoming popular. She is on the rise to success and to dethrone Miss Brooklyn Hayes herself. No way. Not everyone is thrilled by Savannah's new look, however. Oh. Brooklyn starts a rumor that she got plastic surgery. Like, hey, Savannah. Must have been a really expensive surgery, right? So Savannah starts snapping back, you know, defending herself, standing her ground, and this is kind of the first, this is kind of the first part in the series where we see their rivalry begin, if you will. Sorry, but not everyone needs plastic surgery to look good. <laughs> Jenny and Lena give Savannah the idea that she can become more popular than Brooke just because she's pretty now, which I kind of agree with. Overthrow her? Plot her downfall? Become the next queen? What? Just because I'm pretty? Uh, yeah, that's kind of the idea. Then there's this super dramatic scene in English class when Rachel starts texting Brooke on how to sabotage Savannah, and they come up with a scheme to squirt ink all over her. Hey! Oh no! <sighs> Sage offers to take Savannah to clean up and they have their first little bonding moment. Rachel did that on purpose, you know. If she came with you, she probably would have made it worse. Really? Later at home, Savannah confesses her crush to her friends. No surprise, she has a crush on Sage now. Episode 6! The next day in English class, Savannah and Sage get grouped up to work on a project together. Hey, uh, Sage, partner? Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, they're working on a project together. Savannah even invites him over to her house to work on the project together. You guys. Hey, do you want to come over to my house after school and we can work on it? Later at lunch, Brooke starts roasting Savannah a little bit for being overweight. Maybe you're just meant to have a little extra pudge. <gasps> what did you just call her? This causes Savannah to have a bit of a panic attack. Is what she said true? <gasps> yes. Yourself. But anyway, now Sage is over for their English project. So Sage decides to stay for dinner, and when Savannah walks him out to go home... I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you too, Savannah. Aww. Episode 7, my favorite number. For this next scene, I would like to discuss how much of a horrible person Brooklyn is. Don't know what that accent was, but just go along with it. <laughs> Sage? Sage, I need to talk to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. As if it wasn't obvious already how horrible of a person she is. Case in point. So Brooke pulls Sage aside while him and Savannah start to kind of flirt a little bit. And of course she's bawling her eyes out because why wouldn't she be? She then starts making up all these 
disgusting rumors about Savannah and he just believes her. She told me that I was fat and that I had a big tail. What? She also has this rare skin disease. Underneath her fur, it's all red and bumpy and oozes pus. What? Gross! Also, can I just play this clip of the reason why Brooklyn started crying? Like crying on command? I even turned on the waterworks by thinking about how my poor Mitzi got run over. Mitzi! Wait! She thought about her dog getting run over and killed. No. If you didn't think she was insensitive before that scene, like, I, I don't know what's going to change your mind. And now for my favorite line in the whole series. You are like a genius. And Albert, um, oh, you know, scientist dude with the crazy white hair. I think he invented like the toilet or something. Oh my gosh, that's so funny for no reason. Why are you such a female dog? Brooke? Wait, what's happening? What happened to you? What is wrong with you, Savannah? I hate you, Brooke. I wish I never met you. <laughs> Sage. Sage, I- Save it, Savannah. I don't want to hear it. Now Sage won't even talk to her? Episode eight. I'm running out of ways to say new episode names. <laughs> Savvy? Savvy? What's wrong? If you haven't guessed why she's been getting dizzy now, it's because she hasn't been eating. Big surprise! That's what happens when you don't eat. This causes her to have a bit of a hallucination. <gasps> What? Eat it? Are you stupid? So the conversation progresses a little bit with Angelina, Genevieve, and Savannah. They decide that they are sick and tired of letting Brooklyn rule the school and let her walk all over them. So they come with a pact to never let her get in their way again because they are strong independent women. I think it's funny though because they never like discuss how they're gonna put this plan into action. They're just like, yeah, we're not gonna let her beat us up anymore. You want to go to lunch? New character alert! Savannah finally bumps into Tom. Tommy, Tom, 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 Tom. We love Tom. He's one of Sage's good friends and also a fellow member of the football team. Hey, we should hang out sometime. You know, get to know each other. You know what? That would be cool, Tom. So he bumps into Savannah and they start hitting it off. But just remember Tom, he is a critical part of the story. Episode nine. At this point of the story, things are really starting to look up for Savannah. She gets an encouraging note from her mom telling her to just own it. Forget what Sage thinks or has to say about you. Like, just go to school and be true to who you are. Hey, Savannah, how's your rash? <laughs> Hey David, how's your acne? <gasps> so she does exactly that. She goes to school, walks in with confidence, and everyone adores her. Is it true that you're actually a hippopotamus? Honey, you've got that one wrong. I'm a rhinoceros. If someone starts a rumor that you're a hippopotamus, and then you go to school and you're like, actually, I'm a rhinoceros, that doesn't make the situation any better. All right, Savannah. Well, it seems as if you have a new partner for the project. Anyway, so Tom, like, for some reason, and I still don't know why, joins Savannah's English class, and instead of her and Sage being partners, Tom is now partnered up with Savannah, which makes, like, no sense to me. Like, where did he come from? I thought he's been going to the school the whole time. And, like, wouldn't you just make him, like, work on the project by himself instead of, like, splitting Sage and Savannah up and then partner Tom up with Savannah? Whoa. You smell amazing. So they start flirting a little bit, you know, hitting it off. She kind of likes him or whatever. And then Tom says this. Of course you can bring your friends. But, uh, I did want her all to myself. Tom. Tomothy. This is a kid's show. <laughs> Tomothy. Episode 10. Episode 10. We only have seven episodes left. So this is where some shady stuff starts happening. Tom, listen. I really need to talk to you. Uh, okay. Brooke approaches Tom and she offers him a deal. Now at this point in the episode, we don't know what the deal is. We just know that they've made a deal, but 
don't forget about it because it will come back into play later. So remember that Brooklyn and Tom made a deal. Episode 11, that was basically the only thing that happened in 10, really? The only big thing that happens in episode 11 is that Brooklyn and her two besties, Rachel and Alicia, decide to start calling Savannah the nickname Sausage so that they can talk about her like behind her back and nobody knows. Or I guess even to her face because if she doesn't know that she has a nickname, like you could, you could talk about her in front of her face and then like she wouldn't know. She will be known as Sausage. It suits her really. I don't know about you, but I definitely had nicknames for some of my friends in high school so that we could talk about them. Yes, we had nicknames for our friends in high school, but they were always human nicknames. Like if I had a friend named Josh, I was gonna nickname him Richard, not Sausage, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm not gonna nickname a girl that I don't like Sausage because then it just kind of makes it more obvious that you're talking about her. Sausage. Episode 12, Grant oh, episode 12. So popularity has totally gotten to Savannah and Jenny's head at this point. What about this lip gloss, Genevieve? <gasps> Gorgeous. Um, are you guys going to get any work done? Lena, Angelina, is kind of the only sane one left in the group. So the girls are hanging out at Savannah's house and Lena isn't really having that good of a time and it's pretty obvious. But the mood suddenly shifts when Savannah gets a call from Tom. Hello? <sighs> Hello there. Oh, hey Tom. I think we all know what's coming, but I won't spoil it. So Brooke tries to start even more drama by telling Savannah that Sage has absolutely no interest in her, even as a friend, and that they need to cut the cord all together. But you know what? He doesn't like you. But Sage no longer wants anything to do with you. And then Savannah delivers this incredible line. Your problem is that you're 100% peanut butter and jealous of me. I mean, it's so good. Like, I had to include it. There's no way. <laughs> Fast forward to lunch. Brooklyn is literally dying of hunger because she hasn't eaten in, like, several days. <laughs> so Alicia offers to bring her some, some little chocolate goodies. Some chocolate cake, chocolate Pop-Tarts, chocolate pie. What a good friend. You know, you haven't eaten in three days. Here's a chocolate pie. You deserve it, baby. I'm hungry. The cake does come into play in a minute, so like, remember it. Ah, what are you doing? Attention, everybody. May I have your attention, please? Savannah, I think you're the most beautiful girl at OCD. Will you take this necklace and be my girlfriend? <gasps> yes, Tom, I will. coming. Well now that's over. These next three episodes I kind of want to spend more time talking about than the rest. These are the build-ups to the grand big finale which is such a masterpiece of an episode. Episode 13. To kick things off let's hear what Brooke, Rachel, and Alicia are planning. I've come up with the perfect plan. I call it Operation Fry the Sausage. Operation Fry the Sausage. Don't worry, you'll, you'll, you'll learn what that is later. Brooke also mentions that she's planning on throwing a party, the party of the century, to celebrate her and Sage's three year anniversary. This weekend is also going to be the party of the year. The rest of the episode kind of feels self-explanatory. Tom asks Savannah out. Jenny and Savannah have a powwow about Brooke's party, but of course, Lena doesn't feel comfortable going. But then of course, the most trivial plot twist. <laughs> Hey, it's me. The party is four hours away, so it's time for Operation You Know What. Are you ready to go through with your side of the deal? Ladies and gentlemen, this is my favorite episode of the entire series. You have no idea! The party of the century. And we're going. We finally get a look into what Operation Fry the Sausage was about. We don't get details on how they were planning on executing Operation Fry the Sausage. We just know what it involved. Are you absolutely positive that this is the right kind of hair dye? Of course I'm positive. It's black and permanent. I've also added a touch of my own to the plan. It involves expired eggs and a bit of hair removal cream. Black hair dye, super glue, Rotten eggs and hair removal cream. 
some party. Let the guests in. So the party starts, the DJ turns the music up, everybody starts coming inside and dancing and having a good time. But then, Miss Savannah and her girls show up. Let's get this party started. Woohoo! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> That's freaking right! Jenny and Lena got makeovers! It's about time! So now they're all super hot and of course the talk of the party. And this is what sets Operation Fry the Sausage into phase one. It's time for phase one. What? Phase one! So Brooke and Tom sneak off and Savannah sees this, so she goes looking after Tomothy and watch. <gasps> yeah, it is not looking so promising. To sum things up even faster, Nathan, Rachel's boyfriend, cheats on Rachel with Jenny and a very drunk Alicia tells Sage about the entire plan of Operation Fry the Sausage. Brooke runs into some random girl named Megan and totally tells her off. You never know when to stop! Get your ugly rear end out of my face and out of my house! <laughs> Which kind of seems like super random, but it makes sense because Sage was behind Megan the whole time. He heard everything. He heard her tell... Oh. Oh. <laughs> what was I talking about? Something about Brooke, and then she meets Megan, and then Sage sees, and he's like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe that you're such a bad person. You totally told that girl off for no reason. My sage impression is so good. I can't do this right now, Brooke. In fact, I... I'm leaving. Good riddance! Brooke is gone! <laughs> You'll come crawling back to me tomorrow. She did it to herself. So Sage and Savannah run into each other and they're both like, oh, we need to talk. Then they whisk away into a dark closet in Brooke's house where they start to confess to each other like all the rumors that were going on that weren't true. Back on the dance floor, Rachel tells off Brooke, I'm not so sure I want to be part of the plan anymore. You are officially out of the group. Don't even think about trying to sit with us at lunch. And she kicks her out of the friend group. But good for her because Rachel was low-key like my underdog character like I always liked her but who literally who cares about them like go back to Sage and Savannah go 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 Sage <laughs> the ending to this episode is like mwah, chef's kiss pure gold so I'm just gonna play the whole thing for you in its entirety and tell me what you think the first thing I want to say is that I like you the second thing is this. Come get your ride. Get your ride. See how fun it could be to be alive. Hurry up, Alicia. Okay. Did I throw the eggs? I love throwing eggs. Yeah, yeah, whatever. What the? It's so good. It is so good. Like, I've never watched a series like this before where you want more. Like, you want the story to keep going. Like, it's a toy It's a video made with children's toys. And at the end, you're like, goosebumps. Where's more? Where's the next episode? Like, I never, ever in my life have I ever encountered a series made by a human with toys for children like this. Oh my. The series has changed my life. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like way too passionate about this or like if I'm just speaking my truth. <sighs> Folks, I hate to say it, but there's only two more episodes left of season one. <laughs> All right, roll the clip. You stupid trap! <gasps> Brooklyn is clinically 
insane. Also, as the fight intensifies, Sage threatens to call the cops. I swear, if you touch her, I'll call Sage, the cops. Please, can we just no. He threatens to call the police on his girlfriend. Everyone, show me no results. I knew Alicia was always the good guy. Like, she's so dumb. But she could get a PhD. Oh my gosh, this is the plot of Legally Blonde. So there's a lot of confessing that we need to get through, so let's just go through Tom's story first. I have a few confessions to make. First of all, yes, I kissed Brooke, but not willingly. Brooke, for whatever reason, hates Megan Collins. So you remember Megan from earlier, yeah? I paid Megan to pretend to go out with me. I thought that if Brooke saw me with Megan, she'd become interested in me as a way of getting Megan back. The girl that Brooke told off and then Sage broke up with her? Yeah. I'll make you Obviously I refused. But then Brooke called me one day and told me to look at some YouTube video. I did. And turns out it was me and her kissing in her room. She'd left her camera on with the intent of sending the video to Megan. Brooke is literally the queen of blackmail. It's crazy. Also, let me just give props to Sophie GTV, the creator of this series, real quick, because she did so good with the closure in Tom's story. Like, do you remember the deal that they made several episodes back that I told you to not forget about? Like, she finally reveals what the deal is. I begged Brooke to delete the video before anyone else could see, and she did. But she said if I didn't do exactly what she said, she'd show it to Savannah and tell her that I'd been cheating on her. It's crazy to think that throughout the entire series, Tom feels like such a secondary character, but at the end, he comes in clutch and he reveals everything. Like, he pulls out receipts from, like, months ago. The deal was that if I helped Brooke at the party, she would delete the video file forever, and that would be the end of it. She started making out with me. <sighs> you wanted me to. So? There you have it. So, here we are. Here it is. Here we are. The last episode of LPS Popular Season 1. Take it away. Savannah, by the way, Brooke was trying to ruin your life. She bought hair removal cream, super glue, permanent black hair dye, and rotten eggs. You'll find them in the closet there. Yikes. It's over. Sage, you, you're not thinking clearly. Kiss me! Ugh! Ugh! Would you get off me? I... I love you. Shut up, Brooke! You must have a pretty twisted idea about what love is. <laughs> no, literally. Brooke is insane. Regardless of, like, literally everything that happens, the closure that we get knowing that Sage is no longer with Brooke is... <laughs> top tier content! Oh, yes! So the ending of the scene is kind of funny because in case you forgot, the whole point of the party of the century was to celebrate Brooke and Sage's three year anniversary. However, as everyone's leaving the party from this big fiasco that just happened, the love song of the night comes on and it's supposed to be the song that Brooklyn and Sage are supposed to dance to because it's their anniversary. But instead of leaving, while Savannah probably has a concussion and her head is openly bleeding and Sage and Brooklyn just broke up instead of leaving Sage is like Savannah baby why don't you stay a while and let's have it let's have our first dance well this is awkward but uh do you want to dance <laughs> of course excuse me he literally wants to stay and slow dance with her while she's bleeding from her head. Anyway, let's just watch to the end. Get out. I said, get out. <laughs> Everybody, get out. Brooklyn, I almost feel
feel bad for you. No, I don't. <laughs> this series is crazy to me. Like the impact, the storyline, the characters, just everything. Again, I will say like, I don't know if it's because I grew up with it, so I'm biased, but like watching this now as, as an adult from my perspective, I still think it's so good. But yeah, I said I was gonna talk about this later, so here we are again. I don't think that liking this series is something to be embarrassed or like ashamed by either. It was something that I was super passionate about and I don't think it's anything to be embarrassed by. I don't think you should ever be embarrassed by something that you're passionate about even if it does come off as childish or makes you seem like awkward. Because I definitely was the weird kid. Definitely definitely was the weird kid. Especially if it's not harming anybody, like in consideration to the LPS videos, like let people do their thing. All that to say, it's crazy LPS popular. It's so entertaining and it's so engaging to watch. I'll leave the playlist down below for the complete, well, I guess through episode four through the remainder of the series from Sophie's channel if you want to watch through the whole thing. It is pretty long. It took me a while to watch every single episode, a couple days at least. But it's so entertaining and it's so enjoyable and I am so in love with this series even all grown up. <laughs> also, if there are more LPS videos that I should react to, let me know because I know that there are a plethora of LPS videos out there. This was definitely one of the most fun videos that I had script writing. This is something that I had been planning to do for so freaking long. You have no idea. And I'm so glad that I finally got to do it. You know, talk about something that I enjoy and maybe you enjoyed it too. If you did, like, like this video or don't no obligations. No, but seriously, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. Maybe share it with some of your old friends that used to like LPS or that you used to play LPS with and, you know, bring some nostalgia to their day. Subscribe if you want to see more of my face. I do post videos every Sunday. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want. I know it doesn't look like I'm that active, but I'm always there. I'm always, always there. I think that wraps everything up. This was such a long video and I had so much fun and I hope you did too. I really do. Thank you so much for your support and for watching my silly little videos and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.